Chart Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined today by Adam Hill. He is a member of the Board of Supervisors in San Luis Obispo County. We are in that county today. And I want to speak with you about this region and the drought. Uh, it's, it's kind of ground zero for a lot of the problems with regard to the drought. You're right near the coast, so there's some issues with regard to groundwater intrusion. You also have some ag in this area. So talk to us about how San Luis Obispo is doing. We, you know, like most most of the the regions, you know, we have uh, most of our basins are stressed right. and, and in decline, and to some degree, some of them are in serious problems, sure. uh, such as up in Paso, where we've been struggling that for a few years. So I don't think there's anyone who any anywhere in the state probably that can feel you know comfortable. Right. Um, certainly because we, you know, we have not seen rain in so long now, and I think most of us are acclimating to the sense that that long period periods of drought are, are the new normal. Right. Do you feel as if the residents of this county have come together in such a way to really start to conserve water use? As we know, the State Water Board has right. demanded that there be certain reductions. It depends on which city you're in or which right. water district you're in, but has this county come together? I think so. I think the residents are doing their part. I mm -hmm. think we need to do, and all the government agencies need to do their part. I think we need to step it up on recycling. There's still, um, there's still sanitation districts and mm -hmm. um, cities that are pushing their treated effluent out into the ocean, mm -hmm. and that should not happen. We can't waste that water. It should be reused. Uh, it should be recycled. And what about counties and cities looking at projects such as reuse, gray water, toilet to tap, right. whatever it may be, either as a county itself or allowing residents to be more inventive in terms of their water use. Yeah, that's starting to happen and um, you know we're probably behind the behind the curve mm -hmm. a bit because it should have happened in, in, in a right. lot of ways and some other counties in the state have already have big recycling plants and, and mm -hmm. big desal plants coming online and and I know that there's always um, a certain amount of um, probably reluctance just because right. they can be really expensive to do these kind of capital projects but I don't think we're I don't think we're going back. Let's talk about desalination. Right. A lot of excitement behind desalination. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Central Coast, right. a lot of discussion about desalination. Right. As you know, in Cambria, there is a hybrid desalination plant that's been operating, God, since the end of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa Barbara had had a desal plant that kind of was online in the 90s, but no, they're yeah. looking at whether it's time to jumpstart that desal plant. What do you make of those two projects? Well, you know, I think at this point, and I, Santa Barbara is a good example because they did mothball it. Right. And they mothballed it because it started to rain. Right. I, what we've tried to stress to everybody is that even if we have a great rain season, it will not be enough and that all the climatologists are, are, are predicting that we're going to see long periods of drought like this again. So right. we will see some El Nino years, uh, but we should not be fooled into thinking that this is going to solve our water problems. And some would argue that an El Nino year could be before us. Sure. I mean, you look at some of the reports, some predict 80% chance of a nice El Nino for the winter of 15-16. We had that last year, <laughs> prediction-wise. Right, it, but it, it didn't, didn't go happen. so well for no, us, no. so well stated, touche. Right, right. I, I do want to get a sense, though. We know that in San Diego County, Carlsbad will be open. Right. It should be the biggest desal plant literally in the Western Hemisphere. Right. But San Luis Obispo County is not sitting back. Right. Um, there are possibilities in this county. Yeah. Talk to us about one possibility, and interestingly, it's focused upon your largest private employer, Diablo Canyon. Right. Well, I've been in, you know, I was in discussion since last year with PG&E about, because they do actually have uh, the largest operating desalination plant in the West. Wow. Right now. But explain why uh, regular residents are not beneficiaries. Of well, it. it's for the plant use. Right. So they have a very large uh, desalination plant that has been with the plant, I think, since it opened. Okay. And they generate water for the use of the employees, the use of the plant. They also have to fill certain reservoirs for safety reasons. And so are they taking water from the ocean? Yep. But is that water that they're using also for cooling purposes? No, it's totally, no. Uh, the, the, it doesn't have anything to do with, th this is separate from the reactor process. Okay. So this is water that they're, they're desalinating and they also, uh, they treat it beyond uh, that to get it to drinking standards. But right. they, you can treat it twice. You can, you can treat it to the standards, for instance, that would allow you to use it uh, to, to replenish aquifers. I see. To use for outdoor, um, you know, out, out, outdoor landscaping. Right, 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 right. And then you can also bring it to the level where it's, 
uh, re reaches drinking standards. Now, what's interesting about the desal conversation is right. there's some concern about the expense of desal. Sure. It's fairly energy intensive and right. can be expensive. But presumably, to Diablo Canyon, I mean, they have their own energy source right, right there. Right. It's also green. I mean, yeah. you know. Well, the plus side to it for us, and, 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 and you're right, usually people don't get to the desal option until they've exhausted everything else because it is expensive. Mm -hmm. And it, it does have environmental, um, uh, also some, some, some drawbacks right. as well. But we have an operating plant. Right. A desal plant it's, it's that is energized by a nuclear power right. plant, which means that even the um, the level of how much it costs to, to to run it is much less because it's coming from the nuclear plant than it would be for the one that's opening up in Carlsbad. In fact, we've seen figures that, for instance, if you were to do the same plant and have it and have it um, powered on uh, on site by the right. nuclear power plant, it would be sixty percent less on oh just my. energy generation costs. This sounds like a dream scenario. I mean, I'm not an expert, but it right. does seem like the stars have aligned. Yeah, and this. Could could be a really phenomenal solution. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure I'm not the first one to, right. to, to go to PGD and say, hey, how can we get some of your desal water? And but um, I'm certainly the first one that's got you, them seriously um, um, agreeing to work on it with you us. You represent Diablo Canyon. I do. They I are do. a constituent of yours. They are. They don't get to vote, yeah, but they are they a constituent. They are a constituent. Yes, they so, are. What is happening on this front? So we have our drought task force and, you know, made up of some of our engineers and our admin people and our planning people working with the pg e folks. And what we're going to have, in fact, uh, we're going to be at a, a, a get a little bit of a, a internal update on right. Friday. But we if we brought back before the board. The board asked that there be a feasibility study conducted so we can figure out how to make this work. We would like pg e to, it, currently they run the plant at somewhere between 35 and 40 percent capacity. The D-cell. The D-cell plant. So, they so we. So the, we would love for them to run it at a full capacity, sell us that water, let us figure out where best to pipe it to injection wells so that we can help to um, to stabilize some of our aquifers. And so, yeah, I wanted to ask, yeah. what what's the plan for that water? Would it be piped out for just that injection wells exclusively? I, I think that would be the first, yeah. For, for, the, for the amount of water that we believe we could um, work on buying with pg and &E, I think stabilizing some of our aquifers would be critical because whether it's in South County or even right. over the hill to Los Osos, uh, eventually that's gonna be, you know, we, the discussions we're having with pg and &E are big. So f right. they're not, this is not going to be the only phase of it. We hope that they're gonna look, they're a utility. And sure. so what I've said to them early on, including last year when I first started to meet with their executives, which is, have you thought about adding a W to your initials? Right. Yeah. I mean, because um, I mean, look, it's a revenue source for them. They're a private company, sure, you no? Know? Sure. Sure. I mean, you yeah, can't take it away from them. And yeah, and they're not going to be foolish about whether there's an opportunity here to um, to be in the water business. So, are there pipes now coming out of the plant? There are. To there transport are. And they're and they're actually doing some work right now that might allow us to figure out how we can. Um, you know, ha ha how, to, how to make the piping part of the project probably less expensive than it might otherwise be. Does the Coastal Commission need to get involved in this? I don't know. I don't uh -huh. know. I mean, they'll certainly be involved in terms of making sure that, you know, we, we, we're, you know we're, we're informing them. But they have, a, they have, you know, they have the necessary permits to run that. Um, That's true. You know, I mean, that, 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 that desal plant. And right. that desal plant has been there for as long as the uh, nuclear plant has been operating. They're you know, not connected in the sense that right. none of the nuclear reactor process has right. anything to do with the desal process. I mean, in a lot of ways, it can't happen soon enough. I mean, I... Uh, That's, I, I have gotten mostly feedback from people like, thank you, about time, right. and this is great. We, and, or they didn't know that there was a desal so plant there. So what's your sense? When could this go online? We'll know more when we have an update at our board, either late August or uh -huh. early September. That'll give us a sense of okay, this is what we need. you know because we need so there, there are also some things that have to do with the uh, you know getting you know if we're going to provide water in the South County, so where are we going to provide it? Who's going to help us pay for it? Those sorts of things. But, yeah. His name is Adam Hill. He's a member of the Board of Supervisors in San Luis Obispo County, where we are today. My name is Brad Palmer, and you're watching Charter Local Edition.